Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Tales, Outer Tales, Space, Tales, Space, Tales, Space, where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would just like to thank the following tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Data Magnet and Bob the Dragon. Thank you again. And now, on to the story. Story number 1. We Thought Wrong, written by Ender's Game 69. I deliver this recording in what I believe will be the final hour of my life. I can only hope that when this message reaches home, It'll be heard and taken with the utmost seriousness. My name is Galaxon. I am, or was, the commander of the 4th Parisian Band. And I know my world has heard of me. For years, our pirates have raided worlds and trade routes with impunity. I'm sure this part will be censored when, or if it is broadcast successfully to our population. But I don't want to say it anyway. We acted as agents of the Governing Council, with their permission both tacit and explicit depending on where we were going and who we were attacking. Sometimes, I admit, we struck at places outside of our concerns of our government. And of course, since it was outside the concerns, who cared? A series of coughs breaking the narrative, screams in the background, incoherent words. Forgive me. The smoke is starting to make its way in. It won't be long now. I'll be quick. We raided Terra because it was easy, and because the race seemed weak. I mean, who ever heard of a species of intelligence sacrificing mature and productive adults for the young, when they not only can just make more, but enjoy doing so at every opportunity? When they first ventured into interstellar space and made contact with our enemies, it's probable that they had no idea that the invitation to join a trade alliance was an invitation to be invaded. But once they did, hey, easy pickings, right? No grand military fleet, no massive space stations or networks or defensives. They had only begun to draw up plans to harvest the energy of the stars in mass. Like I said, easy. So we hit the place, a few capitals, blew up a few bases. Ah, we had a grand old pirate time as we always have, and we put ourselves in reach, which was one of our biggest mistakes. We took communities easily enough at first, but then one of our people during the harvest grew annoyed at the sound of crying infant of their species. They have a horrific wail. So he shot it in the arms of what we now know as one of their families. No big deal. Just make another. Right. We thought wrong. The woman lost all reason and attacked our raiders. She was shot sixteen times, but she beat one of us to death with his own weapon. That was when we found the other thing out. Humans tell stories. A lot. This story. Well, they recorded it. Eventually, they recorded a lot, and the sight of one of our officers getting one of their infants in its mother's arms, and then her beating him to death with his own weapon before she was finally killed too, sparked an outbreak of violence that cost me four companies in a day. Then one of my idiot officers decided that since they love children so much, we would threaten to kill more of them if they didn't stand down. Big mistake. He showed them that we were kitty-killing monsters. And when humans decided that something is dangerous to the young, they will stop at nothing to destroy it. Gunfire noises, screams cut short, the sound of humans shouting beyond the door. You have to understand. It isn't just my band. They decided our entire race is a threat to their young. The last interceptions we made of their communication showed that the Kellen Confederation was going to trade them weapons and technology to join the war in earnest. We picked up home communications. The whole planet has gone mad with hatred for us. 
Steal their goods. Nobody cares. Kill an adult. They get upset. But kill the young, and they lose all reason, all care for their own lives. If they have any sense of self-preservation left when it comes to wiping us out, I can't find it. I tried negotiating, I tried trading, I tried warning and threatening them, and all that meant was that their convictions were hardened. Whatever you do, do not target their young. You'll do us all. We thought that would make things easy, and we thought wrong. Shouting of human voices intensifies, scrambling of limbs over metal floors and the sound of a button, a single scream of pain, that silence. And that is the last report of the most powerful pirate fleet commander in the last 500 cycles. Since that time, humans have exterminated four military bases and done self-termination runs against entire fleets, crippling operations in 14 quadrants. I am afraid the war is as good as lost. Therefore, I recommend we offer terms to the Kellen Confederation that are favorable to peace, including a mandate that they cease to supply humans with weapons and technology. In addition, in a post-war period, I move that we propose to the Galactic Union that we make it unlawful to employ human mercenaries or to supply weapons to human armies, and make it a war crime to target human young in any operation under any circumstances. Perhaps news of that will help them realize that we are not all the same as the late Pirate Lord. Will that work? Many voices asked the question. End of story. We Thought Wrong, Part 2, written by Enders Game 69. How much longer? Everybody asked that question. North America, South America, Eastern Europe, Asia, and the Indian subcontinent. Everywhere there was a story of one of the pirate pair that raided humanity, executing someone's infant for being found. So the question, how much longer, kept coming. The Kalan Confederation ships were tracked on the global net. Their first transmissions of technological data for interstellar travel had already been given to every government on Earth. Every session of the United Government that began to form in the wake of the stories and videos began the same way. The sound of a crying child, a shot from a pirate weapon, and a mother's screams. And only then were the humans to paint. It was played in the new shipyards that were already being built. It was played in the United Infantry training grounds that sprung up around the world. It was being played in the mech construction factories and training centers. And every day, new reports about their preparations were sent to the Kellan Confederation government. And that same question, how much longer, began to haunt the Confederation itself. Because, with its monitoring of the Terran communications, came more of a cultural exchange of information. Stories, songs, poetry, movies, histories. And it was days before the first transport ships were due to arrive on Earth. Their horror movies are concerning, the chief anthropologist remarked. He stroked his scales in a nervous gesture, shedding some of the dead flecks on the floor. Not the alien invasion movies, the politician asked, with a huffing noise that passed for laughter. Those too, but not for the reason you think. The problem is that every alien invasion and every horror movie monster is so over the top it's utterly ridiculous. Monsters that are immortal, or ghosts that can't die, things like that. Nor aliens with such impossible technology that they defy the laws of physics. The chief anthropologist replied. His reptilian tail lashed at his back as his anxiety grew worse. Why is that so concerning? Because that is the only thing in the universe they consider to be a threat. It has to be gods, or angels, or demons, or impossible monsters, or impossible aliens. Anything less than that, they don't consider it to be reasonable to feel afraid of. If it can't break a planet, it isn't a problem they're worried about. You heard what they did to the Admiral of the Pirate Fleet, didn't you? He was basically a lord. They tore off his limbs, eventually. 
The chief anthropologist shuddered. I'll tell you, sir, I've never seen a species this insanely protective of the young. The father of one of the boys dragged one of the pirates to death behind a two-wheeled motorized contraption and handed over the only shreds of flesh to the ambassador when we asked what happened. They're insane, and they're now convinced that our enemies want to kill their children. The chief anthropologist held out his hands with finger claws upturned. We may just be inviting disaster unless we tread carefully. I understand we need the reinforcements, but this species is the most homicidal, suicidal, bloodthirsty species that I have ever come across. One of their stories has their literal god coming down, pissing some of them off, and they nail him alive to wood to die. My assistant went there on a visit and... He chewed on his tongue for a moment. And what? the politician asked. He was assigned to study their military culture to see how it distinguishes from the rest of the castes, only to find that they have no castes. Anyone can fulfill any role they want. He asked one of the pilots how they'd take down a jamming ship that kept an AI from piloting things, and he just said, blow up the jamming ship. My assistant pointed out that you can't do that because the signal would be jammed. And the pilot said that it didn't matter as long as you just used a living pilot instead. The chief anthropologist shuddered. The politician shrugged. Grassly over-exaggerated, I'm sure. I know some of my colleagues are bothered by this, but as long as they can help us win, I fail to see the problem. The chief anthropologist could only walk away in defeat, leaving a nervous trail of shed skin behind him. Three months later. Not the humans take the casualties, the Kellon Admiral said. They're asking for the first run. It was a request that was happily granted. The Kellon provided starships were piloted by humans, but they were not piloted like the Kellon pilots intended. The Admiral watched with dismay as fighters skipped like smooth stones over the atmosphere of the planet and sent out transmissions audible to both sides, unencrypted. Does anyone else have a translation for yippee motherfucker? The Admiral asked. Heads shook. In contradiction to doctrine, the longships bounced along the atmosphere, confusing the ground defenses and unleashing withering fire on the planetary defenses. Again, contradicting doctrine, which said that ground troops should only come down after the area was secure. The human piloted ships were coming in fast and ascending at a dangerous speed, as soon as they were able to breach the atmosphere of the world. Some sense of foreboding, or hope, or uncertainty, or something he could not truly name, compelled him to his next orders. Put the surface on screen, the Admiral barked, and broadcast it back home. The screen came up and showed transports opening up, and the human jumpers emerging from the bottom of the transport. Humans are machines, he asked, and his crew shrugged it off. That was when the second broadcast hit, the sound of some wailing, a familiar sound of a weapon going off, and a scream of a human woman. This broadcast was unencrypted as the rest, and clearly intended to be heard by all, and it seemed to drive the humans mad. Then he saw the flesh pilots, and the humans loved of overkill. The machines the humans piloted were heavy lumbering things with massive arms equipped with guns mounted with projectile weapons the size of a body. Contemporary strategy involved capturing positions, but the humans' heavy infantry had no interest in capturing positions. Each of their mechs had mounted rockets on both shoulders, dozens of small ones that were launched at any building in their path. The Pankin Alliance had soldiers aplenty, but they fought as if they wished to live. The humans fought as if they were there to kill and didn't care if they died in the process. The first transports holding secondary light infantry began to land moments after the mechanized walkers. These used light rocket-powered air sleds that shot over the battlefield. These lightly armored soldiers sprayed chaff everywhere to cripple the laser-based weapons of the surviving defenders the white mist wreaking havoc on their ability to resist. This isn't war. This is revenge. Are they insane? Are they insane? The Admiral asked the question twice, and still got no answer. 
Whoever controlled the monitor began to zoom in on the close fighting and saw the twisted mask of hatred on the Terran face of a light infantryman. His projectile weapons' sharp gleam at the front suddenly had a clear purpose. They put knives on their guns, the Admiral half stammered as the Terran infantryman gutted a Pankin Alliance soldier, shouting in rage as if it had been his own young to be killed by the pirates. The Admiral tried to imagine. From what twisted depths of the abyss can hate like that come from? What is he thinking about? Doesn't he know what he's doing? Is he a machine? He whispered his exclamation. Sir, we have an incoming transmission from the Terran Admiral, the officer said without tearing his eyes away from the screen while the screen zoomed out and showed a battle-mad Terran pick up a severed arm and beat an unfortunate to death with it. What is he saying? the Admiral asked. He is saying that, where unnecessary, the Pankin turned out to not be as fierce as they were led to believe. The officer on the comms and translator waited for his admiral to answer. But as they saw the Terran banner raised over the last standing building, and the human infantry and mechanized forces sent fire to the last Pankin stronghold in the area, and shoot down those who were trying to flee, the admiral could not argue. Tell him, it's fine. We'll take the next world when we leave next month, the Admiral responded. His comms and translator officer relayed that, and then his scales began to shed horribly. They're not waiting, sir, he says, follow with supplies, but the next world is only one jump away and not ready. He didn't use many supplies, so we can follow when we're ready. Weeks later, at the Cologne Confederacy Assembly. Fourteen worlds in fourteen months. The war's progress has completely reversed itself. The Bankan are offering terms of surrender. Some strange ones, some that I can understand. But there is another question we have to ask. Will the humans be willing to make peace? The assembly heard the question asked by the revered speaker, and they were all silent. The transmission sent out by the various fleets of the human military operations ranged from the insane to the astonishing. They were rapidly becoming known across the galactic civilizations as the War Apes, and they were beginning to appear in popular media and propaganda regarding the changing fortunes of the war. The one slow and inevitable defeat was rapidly turned into total victory. But Terran rage at the Pankin had not abated, and it was growing concerning. Will they fight without allies? someone asked and that brought a general round of laughter. Daring solo operations by human officers were as much a routine as sunrises now. They are not a totally irrational species. If we offer to make it a war crime, galaxy-wide, to ever harm their young under any circumstances, and to immediately hand anyone who does over to the Terran government for trial and disposal, they might recognize the value of this and make peace with the Pankin along with the rest of us. The reserve speaker suggested. Will that really be enough for them? It was a reasonable question. We think so, the reserve speaker said. And then he moved to take a vote. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one. And until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.